that song. It's a song again. Crazy bus, crazy bus, riding on a crazy bus. Oh no, no intro themes. There's plenty of videos about intros. This video is for songs within the cartoon. The top 10 worst cartoon songs ever. It's Juice and Jam time. Come with us as we ride, 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 ride. Put your cock in a cone, it's Chalk Zone, a fun idea for a cartoon where Rudy Tabuti, that's his real name, can enter a world where every drawing that was erased has come to life. And what's more appropriate to fit in this world of the erased than a one-hit wonder band? Who let the dog sound? Who, 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 who? That was the Gangnam style of the 2000s. The Baja Men, or as they're called in this episode, the Haha -ha Men, join Rudy and his friends on a quest in the Hahamas. Awful. They thankfully restrained themselves from using Who Let the Dogs Out in favor of their other song that didn't go anywhere Lime and the Coconut. The And that's why they're a one-hit wonder, and that's why most of us have more Twitter followers. Barely past 1,000. Come on, guys. We gotta help the Baja men. Give them some pity followers. We can't rest until Twitter verifies their account. That's just the spirit of the Bahamas. Wait a minute. That's not a Baja man. That's Phil Lamar. What is this? Puffy Yumi? The Baja men did not even have the balls to voice their own shitty cartoon. Meanwhile, Nickelodeon decided to not include this episode in the Season 2 iTunes release due to the license music. Just give Baja Men the two dollars you owe him. If it hadn't been for you, I would be now in someone else's digestion. You know there's something you should know, so I'm gonna tell you so. Don't sweat it. Forget it. Enjoy the show. Working all day, now it's time to unwind. Kick back, relax, take a load up your mind. Look, if you're gonna have a cartoon rap, don't. It's never a good idea. Hotel Transylvania 1 was great, but the final few minutes where Adam Sandler was rapping as Dracula just drenched me in a sour feeling of shame, making me want to shrivel up and phase through my seat into the center of the earth. So listen, all you singers from here to Beijing, you better crash about- No. I refuse. And then you get any cartoon that has ever wrapped the phrase, I'm blank and here to say- Who are you? I'm the master rapper and I'm here to say- My name is Blossom and I'm here to say- I'm Mr. Plow, and I'm here to say- It's still being used as recent as the 2016 Powerpuff Girls reboot. I kid you not, they did like three separate rap segments. Where did I'm blank and here to say originate? According to thevillagevoice.com, they found the first rap to feature it was in the 1980 song Birthday Party by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Melly Mel, and I'm here to say I was born on the 15th day of May. This trend carried on as an easy way for rappers to introduce themselves, yet the Village Voice dated the phrase further back. Those lyrics were possibly rearranged from a commercial jingle about Chiquita Bananas from the 1940s, a commercial that features a human-sized banana woman consuming her own brethren. I'm Chiquita Banana and I've come to say bananas have to ripen in a certain way. This rap was all thanks to a gigantic war fetish commercial. In conclusion, any terrible cartoon rap fits into this countdown spot. Pick anyone you want. They're all terrible. I'm the plowing guy in the USA. I got a big plow and I'll move a lot of things. Stop. Like your cow if Please. you have one. Stop it right now. Promise you'll never do that again. All right. <laughs> Joy, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. There is nothing good that ever came from it, but let me fill you in with some history. During premiere episodes, they would have licensed music from the likes of Kenny Loggins, Billy Idol, and Michael Jackson, or at least covers of them. These tunes appeared during premiere episodes while any reruns or home video releases replaced the song with generic stock music. <laughs> That one Koopa is a little too happy about being stepped on by Peach. I'm not a burger, I just was looking for Turbo Man doll. But for reasons I can't fathom on the official Shout Factory DVD, the one licensed song still left in was a cover of Jungle Love, written by God herself and passed down to the motherfucking time. I mean the guys in that Prince movie? Yeah, Purple Rain.
good song, but the licensing issues get worse, as there was an episode featuring the music duo Milli Vanilli. Accountant? That is a good one. <laughs> Yes, that was a real music group who were later outed for lip-syncing songs sung by other people. This episode had the Mario gang going to see them in concert while Millie performed Blame It On The Rain. This setup collides with the villain Bowser, or King Koopa as he was known at the time, to crash the concert. Blame it on the rain? <laughs> Blame it on King Koopa! <laughs> In later releases, they used that same replacement song that did not even contain vocals. They're lip syncing to nothing. That, or this is one impressive acapella performance. And they even silenced King Koopa from mentioning the copywritten song. <laughs> Blame it on King Koopa! <laughs> As the series chugged along to the later seasons, they gave up on licensed music altogether, and instead had original music sung by the Koopa Kids, the main villain's spoiled lizard children. I don't know why they did this, but I wanted to stop. And this is why Nintendo doesn't give their Mario characters voices. Well, fan frickin tastic it's the Fantastic Foursome. Outside the comics, nothing good has ever come from them, especially not what I'm about to show you. I've sent people this before who refuse to believe it's real, but I saw it on TV myself. The Human Torch singing in episode 11 of the 1994 cartoon. This is for you, Melinda. I hope you like it. Try to play you for a fool Like you see a girl who's unique It's a treat cause she's sweet And she really seems to knock you off your feet I reserved a contender already for bad rap in general, but this is a special case. It's a song about being too cool and too much of a player to confess your feelings to a girl since you got so many girls, because we all can relate to that, especially kids. His hubris ends up losing that one girl as she metaphorically vanishes from existence. Don't you just love his 90s mint colored jacket? He looks like a Ken doll with even less of a dick. This may sound crazy, but it was rumored this song had instrumentals by Slim Kid 3 of Farside, but Slim denied it. Although he is friends with Johnny Storm's voice actor, Brian Austin Green from 90210, who later attempted a rap career which did not go anywhere. There was a time when I used to think past physical acts. I was tired of leaving too many tracks and no one had my back. Always looking on the other hand, till the other man. This song and the reason why it's in here was all Brian Green's doing. The cartoon needed a song and Brian proclaimed, yo. Here's my mixtape. Despite portraying the Human Torch, he lacks the ability to spit fire. And if you take a gander here, there's a guy conducting an orchestra when this song clearly is not orchestrated. That or he's attempting a shadow clone jutsu. Maybe the animators just gave up. By the end of the song, anyone lip syncing the music abandoned ship. To cap off the song, the building they're standing in 9-11s itself. Yeah, really. Keep calm, everyone. Don't panic. Oh, and nice of Reed Richards to block the escape. No one must live to tell of the Fantastic Four's humiliating demise. But fret not, the building was simply falling into the center of the Earth. Oh yeah, that's how buildings work. Sure. Wonderful, how do you know? Let their actions speak. Absolutely the worst Sonic cartoon, Sonic Underground. Using the power of music and video editing software, every episode features an original music number with Sonic and his long lost siblings. No, they weren't in any video games before. No one is an island. Life fucks everyone. Kurt Cobain, 1992. In these music videos, they don't have enough footage for their videos, so they splice in recycled footage from other episodes while also throwing in every video effect provided by Windows Movie Maker. Oh, you like those effects? Well, how about some barn door transitions? 
I'm glad a broadcast TV show has the same production quality as a kid's YouTube AMB. I only regret Bring Me to Life by Evanescence wasn't playing. I wanna go and it's all that you wish for. Think of all the treasure you're gonna miss. Don't you wanna get your hands on riches galore? No. Why does every video game cartoon have to include crappy musical numbers? We're scrapping the bottom of the barrel of monkeys with Donkey Kong Country. Emphasis on cunt. Hey, this is pretty sophisticated animation for the time using motion capture suits on TV animation. That's real advanced, but as we learn with every Robert Zemeckis film, motion capture animation is that of a turd in a toilet. Floaty and shitty. To compensate, let's throw in a song each episode. Not just one song, maybe two songs per episode. How generous. No gamer has suffered until they've heard DK sing Our Love is Stronger Than a Golden Banana. I'd shower you with coconut cream pies. Thank the gods Nintendo approved of a song insinuating this monkey's gonna bukkake all over his love interest. I'm only thankful these CG artists could not animate liquids in 1997, otherwise they'd be happy to show us the lewd act. It was the 90s after all, a time when Rocco's modern life got away with hardcore sex decapitation scenes. Truly, those were the days. A love is stronger than a golden banana. We'll be back after these messages. Banana shake, banana muffin, banana pie. Donkey Kong is taking a break, but he'll be right back. Then more monkey business is on the way with three friends and Jerry. Followed by the kids from room 402 right here on Fox. Yeah, it's me. Love the jacket, Charlie. It's hard to get something that fits my shoulders. Nice. Okay, this movie is live action, but this stupid animated segment counts. 2003's Kangaroo Jack. They advertised this entire film around this animated dream sequence, tricking kids into thinking the whole movie would be about a rapping animated kangaroo. But no, it's a movie about these two guys on a trip to Australia on the run from the mafia while they hunt a regular kangaroo that only sung in a short dream sequence. You can talk. And I can sing. I said a hit. Oh, the hippie, the hippie. Granted, now as an adult, a talking rapping kangaroo movie sounds terrible, but I was a kid at the time. I wanted that crap. But no, marketing knew they'd make a few extra fun bucks tricking me into thinking this will be the next Scooby Doo live action. Entire commercials based around a music sequence, all for an unrelated family comedy about running from the mafia. You could believe me. I'm gonna carve you up piece by piece. Family comedy. In short, the cartoon music sequence isn't inherently terrible, just the way it was advertised. Call free Willy! Let Willy set you free! Okay, maybe it was terrible. Somebody stop that guy! I'm the kind of guy who can't stand a holiday, so I drink them all away, that's me. It's not just one night, it's Adam Sandler in eight, count them eight crazy nights. A 2D animated Hanukkah film animated by much of the same crew slowly dying of radiation poisoning from the financial bomb that was the Iron Giant. While it's still a crude comedy, the animation is far beyond the typical adult cartoon. And just like a holiday special, there's some pretty good songs written and performed by Adam Sandler. But there's one tune I'd like to call out, the song Let It Out Davy. Now, the movie revolves around Adam's character Davey being depressed during the holiday season. Near the third act, a pivotal character development moment comes from a song delivered by the spirit of marketing. Mascots from Foot Locker, Radio Shack, Sharper Image, and more. Who said that? I said that. Everybody wake up! This is not a rehearsal! Numb Nuts is here! Whee! Roger on that. Over. Let's do this, people! Not a childhood friend, not the love interest, not a ghost of a family member, but advertisements change his ways. Imagine if in Christmas Story, Ronald McDonald came out of the TV to tell Ralphie not to fire his gun. That would just be inaccurate. Whenever Ronald McDonald came out of my TV, he usually encourages me to lock and load. Adam's character wasn't exactly spiteful towards capitalism, so I don't know why these advertisements were here. Well, besides the obvious. My buddy Mr. Foot Locker will warm your feet. You need a fancy doodad? Hello, sharp image. 
As hardcore as I am into The Simpsons, I never really had a dropping point. I casually watch the newer episodes, even if they don't humor me as much as the older ones. That controversial principle in the Popper episode was whatever, I saw it as a young age, so I didn't care. But there is one scene I personally feel is the worst thing The Simpsons ever did that wasn't a video game. Season 21, episode 20, To Surveil With Love. In this episode, they decided to not even have the typical intro, which is a pretty big deal for a non-holiday episode to open with without the usual intro. So what did they do for this occasion? Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Hey, Diddy. what up, bro? Grab my glasses, I'm out the door. I'm gonna hit this city go. Oh, that's what they did. Characters lip syncing to TikTok by Kesha. For me, that was the moment the Simpsons jizzed the mattress. The point of no return. Forever, that mattress will always have that weird brown spot you cannot remove while you explain to your mom it's just a drink you spilled and nothing more. Trying to get a little bit tipsy. Don't stop. It's not that bad, but you get the idea. So does Kesha show up in the episode? No, it's just a regular episode completely unrelated to the song. Why is it here then? Well, it was part of a week-long channel promotion called Fox Rocks Week. <sighs> Fox Rocks Week had premiere episodes that related to music. While other shows like Bones or The Cleveland Show incorporated the theme of music into their storyline, The Simpsons decided, let's make a music video with Kesha. Uh, but where do we put the music video? I don't know, just make it the show intro. Why? I don't know, just do it. The video is well animated, simulating one long tracking shot, but it's just so out of place. Like, I prefer it if Kesha made an original song for The Simpsons rather than, hey, this song's popular, make it the intro for an episode. It feels like an executive forced this in. Yo, it's your boy B. Clux, and for all y'all who want to add some hotness to your cell phone, text Rooster to 75555. How many of you remember Jamster? Hey, it counts as cartoon music. This is what we did before iPhones, back when we had to text a keyword to a machine and receive a single ringtone or wallpaper. Commercials for these would air all the time at 3 a.m., or as I call that airtime, unemployment television. What the Jamster commercials didn't make clear is that you weren't just buying a one-off download, you were really paying a monthly fee for a subscription service no one knew how to get out of, no matter how much you begged. The most infamous of the Jamster ringers was the crazy frog who beat Bob 80s music, and I'm not making this up, had a penis in his original design. <laughs> Crazy Frog terrorized much of Europe in the 2000s with its popularity, and I'd make his music number one on this list until I stumbled onto a far worse Jamster mascot. No words, just watch. What the hell was that? I don't understand what that was, what language it was in, or even if it was from our dimension, but that happened. Assy McGee here making fart noises to the rhythm of the music, and it was broadcasted on TV somewhere I'm assuming within Earthrealm. It's a singing ass. It's animated. I challenge you. Find me a song from a cartoon that is not a theme song worse than this. Your prize will be nothing. <laughs> Don't you want a rematch? Ding, ding. The champ is here. The number one chart hit from Europe is finally available in the U.S. Text Crazy 1 for the Polly's a part of the giant plan. Text Crazy 2 for the Masters, part of the real tone plan. To 7, 55, 55. Now, Jamster.